The French nobility was a privileged social class in France from the Middle Ages until its abolition on June 23, 1790, during the French Revolution. There are two different types of French nobility, immemorial and ennobled families. Immemorial nobility are people who have been considered noble since the very beginning of France as a nation. And then there's ennobled families who became noble as a decree from the king. The nobility had one role, to own and manage the king's land. You see, the king can't rule by himself. He needed to delegate powers to specific people, and the way that he did that is by granting people, nobles, the right to run his land. There are many privileges that came as a result of becoming a landowner. You didn't have to pay taxes. You gained the ability to earn rent from the people who lived on that land. You were able to hunt indiscriminately on that land, and you were able to own a sword. This structure was advantageous for the king and for the noblemen, but not really for anyone else. The serfs and peasants that would live on the land, work the land, and ultimately have to pay rent to be on the land were suffering. But the structure remained, because these people, the nobles and the king, had the resources to build infrastructure that would somewhat elevate the lifestyle of the serf. Over time, serfs, peasants, merchants, the common people would take issue with this feudalist system, so they chose to dismantle it altogether in 1790 during the French Revolution. And practically overnight, the aristocracy lost property and land that their families had owned for centuries. But the wealth wasn't lost. Many families had been compounding on their wealth for centuries, and quite adequately, they were able to diversify their wealth and be able to preserve their status. Many aristocrats that didn't leave France after the French Revolution chose to fly under the radar and pose as regular wealthy people. One family in particular, Dupont de Ligon, were able to fly under the radar very well. They posed themselves as a old money family, but in reality they had a very colorful heritage. This family's prominence and social status developed in the same way as other aristocrats. Land was granted to them, and they built castles on that land. The Ligon family historically owned two castles and large swaths of land. That land generated them a lot of wealth, and they brought that into the modern age, even after the institution of nobility was dismantled. This is Xavier Pierre-Marie Dupont de Ligon. He was born January 9, 1961, and he's an engineer. He's also the patriarch of the Ligon family. His personal life is greatly unknown. He was a salary man at his engineering job, and he started many small businesses that had relative success. And the businesses would vary. He started a restaurant, and then he started a travel agency. Other than that, his finances were relatively unknown. The home that he had in Nantes was very modest. For a former aristocratic family, it was basically a shack. This led many to believe that maybe the Ligon family wasn't as wealthy as they used to be. Xavier had four children with his wife, Agnes. They varied in age and all of them received high quality private school education and they all came back home with baccalaureates and diplomas in various different disciplines. His children's names were Arthur, he was 20 years old, Thomas, 18 years old, Annie, 16 years old, and Benoit, 13 years old. And that's where the information about this family stops. Xavier was reserved, especially in social situations. Not many people knew about the ongoings of his family. People were only aware of his lineage and his accomplishments. Anything greater than that remains in the unknown. And this is important to take note for what's to come, because his reclusiveness has been his best protection. Police in western France have found the bodies of a mother and her four children buried under the terrace of their house in Nantes. They'd been missing since the beginning of April. The family's two pet dogs were buried alongside. A major police hunt is on for the father, 50-year-old Xavier Dupont de Ligon. He told friends that he was a secret agent and had to leave the country. On April of 2011, a series of strange actions would occur concerning the Ligon family. All at once, the lease on the house had been terminated, all bank accounts had been closed, the children's tuition were paid, Xavier went out of his way to call his wife's job and tell her that she had medical troubles and couldn't come into work, a message was placed on the letterbox alerting all mailmen to return packages to sender, and Xavier bought cement, a shovel, and a hoe. Xavier then killed his entire family with a 22 caliber long rifle that he had inherited from his grandparents. To dispose of the bodies, he buried them in different places in the basement of the house. And the burials weren't done haphazardly. He buried them with religious relics, and he made sure that each burial was done carefully. Soon after that, he vanished. There was a subtle digital trail that he left behind, but that ended up going nowhere. The last image of him being alive was of him withdrawing money from a cash machine. He took out approximately 30 euros. His family's bodies were discovered nearly a month after he killed them. Many people investigated the house, 
because it had broken windows, the odd note on the door telling people to return packages. All of it was suspicious, and the casual investigation culminated with a bill collector forcing his way into the home because he was owed 20,000 euros. And from there, the bodies were discovered and exhumed by police officers. There are many conspiracies as to why Xavier murdered his family. Some say he killed his family to hide the shame of his financial ruin. Some say that he spent all of his family's money and wanted to run away from that responsibility. But unfortunately, that's all speculation. And since 2011, the French police have received 900 possible sightings of Xavier, some within French borders, but all of them were not him. This story was incredibly polarizing in France, with so little information about his family background and so little information about his motives to kill his family, a lot of people realize that it's going to be impossible to find him. Him being reserved is the only reason why he hasn't been found, and for a lot of people that's even more unsettling. We don't know why he did it, all that we do know is that he got away with it.